Yo, what is up guys? So we're here to go over the one card Kyrios Dominion of the Light Sworn combo where you don't actually leave them with a grinder golem which can actually attack over this which is not actually a good thing. But anyways, I'm going to go ahead and give an in-depth explanation because I talked a little bit about it a while back and uh, some people are like, I'm still confused. How does it work? Okay, I'm going to break it step by step. So first off, this is how you pull off the new Light Sworn card that's absolutely amazing. And keep in mind, guys, you don't actually have to be playing Light Sworn to pull it off. Now, this card will probably be getting banned pretty soon because there's so many combos. It's like the new Gofu. But anyways, first off, what you got to do is give your opponent Grinder Golem. Now, one important step is to place Grinder Golem in one of the link zones that it would be, um, I guess I should say, in the same column, okay? So you would want to place the grinder golem either here or right here where my mouse is, okay? And then the next step is you want to use the tokens that you get to make link spider and then also make a link karibo. Uh, now it doesn't really matter which one you go for first because they both have the link arrows of pointing downward. And then what you're going to go ahead and do is go straight into another link summon of Akashic Magician over here. So when this card gets um, Link Summoned, you bounce back everything that is in the same uh, column that are monsters. So you bounce back whatever it's pointed to, which is going to be up and down. So anyways, it's going to bounce back the Grinder Golem, and there's nothing here. Make sure you don't summon anything also over here. That's kind of something important. And then what you're going to go ahead and do is uh, bounce the Grinder Golem back. Then you're going to go ahead and resummon Grinder Golem, giving it to your opponent once again. Uh, this one uh, zone does not matter at this point. Uh, it doesn't matter where which zone you put the Grinder Golem in. It's only important for that the first Grand Golem that you go for is, again, uh, upwards of the Akashic Magician. And then what you're going to go ahead and do is use Link Karibo's effect and actually get rid of a Grand Golem uh, token and actually summon itself. And that's going to give you three monsters. Uh, one's going to be Fiend, one's going to be uh, Cybers, and one's going to be Spellcaster. And then after that, you're going to be able to finally make your a uh, boss monster over here, Curios Dominion of Light Sworn. So as soon as this card gets Link Summoned, what you're able to do is immediately after he summoned is send uh, one card from your deck to your graveyard. And this could be anything. So it's not even just Light Sworn. Anything can use this and it's an insane effect. So you're gonna go ahead and activate that effect. And as soon as it's summoned, you're gonna send uh, the Felice over here. And this is how you don't leave your opponent with Grinder Golem. Cause I had this discussion a while back on my live stream uh, when I was talking about the, the problem with some of these grinder golem turn one combos is you actually kind of make it so you put yourself in a bad scenario because this can obviously attack over this and uh when you go for it well, let me mess over grinder golem um so it says uh if you special summon a monster uh, if you special summon this monster you cannot normal summon or set a monster during the same turn so at that point some people are like oh this is a bad combo but i'm gonna go ahead and show you real quick why it's not you can actually go into a lot of different things i mean you can go send wolf you can do a lot of different things so we're gonna go ahead and activate slow recharge at this point it's we've already made it but it's just to further, I guess, extend like what happens in the replay. So uh, we, we kind of sack him over there with the, the wolf over there. And uh, anyways, so wolf's going to activate its effect. So at this point, we can go into any uh, rank four that we would like to go for. I get charge light upgrades, send some extra cards. You guys can already see it, like the shenanigans is real over here. And basically, you just fleece his uh, card. We end up getting another fleece. I, it was unfair, I, I will admit. And at this point, uh, it's pretty much game over. <laughs> I mean, look at this. We went through 18 cards turn one. I was even considering running another card. And I know a lot of you guys want the deck profile this is kind of an early build but basically this is what i i would want to show you guys and i think my opponent actually like ends up otking me it's, it's welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh these days right if you don't otk turn one you lose him um actually a, a smarter play would have actually been to uh, actually summon fairy tale snow because i had lots of stuff to go over but um i'm just gonna go ahead and let, let the guy just summon a bunch of cards like i said uh fairy tale snow would have been uh a smarter move to make because like i said these these days in Yu-Gi-Oh, you gotta otk um in fact the smart smartest thing uh to do actually would have been to uh, use Fairy Snow as a material so it would be in the graveyard therefore when it's summoned immediately I'd be able to like bounce something back um, or I guess bounce something back uh, or put it put it face down is what I should say and then he ends up making Crystal Wing and um, or Supreme King Dragon Clear Wing <laughs> but uh, anyways yeah at this point he OTK me with, well, well, welcome to Yu-Gi-Oh I, I thought that was a really good first turn but like I said uh, I really should have summoned this now I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the deck profile for so those of you guys that do want it it's not anything too special it's a little bit early for this build uh, but I wanted to give it to you guys as is so maybe a lot of you guys that you know want to play Light Sworn uh, can try this out now like I said it's an early build so I think that there could be uh, some improvements uh, I was actually testing out Gofu there's just really really limited room on the extra deck if you do happen to go for Gofu, you could probably drop this card, I'll be honest. Uh, I just really like this card so much because in the off chance that you get the uh, Warriors out, 
This card is just so good. It's just whenever a level four or lower monster is, uh, or monsters is special summon. So if your opponent like special summons a bunch of cards at once and they're all like four or lower, you just get rid of them. It's really good. Uh, you uh, detach material and then you destroy that special summon monster or monsters because it can actually hit multiple. But there's nothing like I said that it's it's too uh, special with stuck and hit sort. Um, the the biggest addition though is grinder golem. Really, like I said, you can actually make it with Gofu. There's actually extension plays with summoner monk and Gofu that are just absolutely crazy. Um, but if you're going for that you won't have grinder golem technically without grinder golem there's not a one card combo like summoner monk you would have to summoner monk into uh, another card maybe you get lucky with uh raiden like or you would have to go for like a photon thrasher in, and then summon summoner monk and then get this or this into like you know wolves and felices and they're, they're just there's a lot of combos to make it but the only one card combo that i'm aware of that's not like utilizing like brilliant fusion and like also trick clowns and stuff like that there's a lot of versions of those decks but I don't know, I find them to be a little bit inconsistent, but let me go ahead and go over the uh, deck profile, and then I'll kind of talk about things as we go along. So three copies of Grand Golem, it's really self-explanatory, I mean, I basically explained the combo uh, step by step, because I know, like I said, I talked about it in live stream, and some people were like, wait, I don't get it, and there you go. It, the most important thing, I think the things that you guys were confused on, is uh, the, just the bouncing back of Grand Golem. It's a kind of a bread and butter play, so you really should learn this in, in just in general, because Everyone is going to be doing that, and one important thing that you can actually do is actually line up your monsters to specifically be in those certain zones so you don't match up against it, if that makes sense. I know they can make action condition and bounce your monster back, but because almost every deck right now is like trying this card out, it's, it's just seeing so much play. Um, in fact, there's just so many just crazy link combos with so many different things right now uh, with Grinder Golem. So you can kind of use that to your advantage now that you guys kind of uh, understand how it works. But yeah, three copies of him. He's also a dark, uh, which works well with the uh, Allure of Darkness. But next up, we have Garoth Light Swarm, where I just played one of like pretty much uh, a lot of like the obscure ones. Uh, then we have uh, Fairy Tale Snow. I actually think you could bump this card up. Um, it's just a really fantastic card in any like Light Swarm variant. But I found it to be not really necessary to play three of. I know the card's amazing, don't get me wrong, but I feel like sometimes you just you just need like two. I think two is a pretty good number. If you want to play three, it's not that bad, but sometimes you open up too many and it just can be kind of bad, but overall, like, the deck is pretty consistent. Like I said, I didn't really like the whole Predator Plant engine. You can open up so crazy with, like, the Brilliant Fusion, like, there's a lot of potential bad draws with that deck, but there's also potential to do crazier things in it to go completely off. But anyway, so Fairy Tail Snow, fantastic card. And then we got Lila. Uh, it's just a pop one back row. Uh, there was <laughs> there was a duel where what was it? It was like the Black Garden. I think this was like the only card I could have actually used to get rid of it. But the card would have been destroyed immediately. So like Raiko was our only out, which we'll get into in a second. But anyways. Playing three copies of Summer Mark. It's mostly just another alert target. However, it lets me go ahead and just get rid of and potentially dead early cards. Like this card is kind of dead early on in the game. Or if I don't have another dark, I could just, you know, I could either alert of darkness, summon monk, or just get rid of it. Um, and then also because it's level four, it lets me just go ahead and make uh, Minerva, which is a pretty good card in Night Swarms. Uh, but yeah, um, and then next up, I have three copies of Lumina, just a standard little card over here. Um, for Light Swarms, and then we have Raiko, the Twilight Swarm file. I recommend all Light Swarm players to play at least one copy of the new uh, Twilight Swarm, uh, Raiko, just because he is a dark and that helps out because uh, when you're going for Charge of the Light Brigade, you can actually charge the Light Brigade into this guy and then actually Lure of Darkness him, so you can actually go for even further draw power in the deck. I just like playing one copy of him. He's fantastic. I, w I would consider it playing two copies of him. He's just really good to get rid of like one problematic card. If your opponent has the uh, play of the, um, oh gosh, what is that magician? Um, magician, if I could spell. Um, it's the, uh, uh, is it Al no, it's not Akashic. Uh, oops, we <laughs> totally m messed up the board over there. But it's the uh, the one where it, it can negate anything. It just, it just baits out that card real quick. Um, if you guys haven't seen like World Chalice, they pretty much make it all the time. It, it's just used in a lot of Link decks. I wish I would remember the card's name. I thought it was Magician. Um, anyways, or is it Sorcerer? Um, but anyways, it's a Link monster. It has a once per turn. Like if there's like three things linked to it, which uh, there's a lot of Link decks that are just throwing that thing out turn one. It just forces the bait out of that card. So it baits that card out, then you drop a Judge Dragon and you say GG. But no monsters left on the field and you summon the Dark Magician, right? And then you go for game. But yeah, I like this card a lot. Fantastic. I would highly recommend you guys to try it out for uh, a lot of you Light Swarm players. I think it's great. Uh, next up, Triple Raiden uh, from Metal Gear. Just a fantastic uh, card over there. Um, 
pretty self-explanatory. Sends four basically, two uh, up front and then two during the end phase. And it also is a tuner, which lets you make uh, good cards like this guy. Um, I think that I could definitely play like, a few other uh, sequels in the deck. Um, like I said, this was like built like really early on for just testing stuff. So, three Judgment Dragon, he uh, blows up the field. And then uh, Triple Cubs and Food Pond Thrasher. This is another card um, that I was considering. Uh, playing, I like this card just over Gofu because the one problem that I have, with, I was originally playing three Gofu when I was like building the deck. I don't know how I feel about Gofu because you just like you run out of room in the extra deck, especially when you're playing like multiple copies. And then I decided I'll try it without Gofu, and then at that point I just had much more room for the extra deck because sometimes I like making you know the other cards. Heck, uh, number forty-one would be a card I would definitely recommend you guys put in here. Um, that, that card is just excellent. You know, put it in number forty-one. Okay, let's let's just do that right now. This is deck profile live, uh, but. Definitely uh, keeping this guy. He's like the best uh, level uh, or I should say rank four that you just throw out like really early on in the game, especially um, when you can protect this card. I think I ended up going for a Minerva and a Kyrios. I mean, I think this this card would actually be excellent as well. I highly recommend uh, playing him. But um, there's not really a good like turn one stun card. I remember before it was all about Giant Hand. Let's, just, let's be honest, no one playing Giant Hand after the reprint. <laughs> it's kind of funny. But uh, yeah, I think at number 41 uh, is just probably one of the most optimal plays after Kyrios is probably this guy instead of Minerva. I know Minerva can definitely lead into extra things. She can kind of get some extra destruction, but with so many decks, just the OTKing. I mean, I got OTKed, you guys saw, uh, right after I made that play, uh, which I thought was a pretty powerful play. I just wanted to uh, show you guys how to like go for it. But. Um, what, what card were we talking about? Oh, yes. We're talking about Thrasher. We're talking about Gofu. Um, you guys can try it out if you guys want to. I mean, technically, Gofu is an alert target. So if you want to just play one, the problem that I had, again, was Gofu is, like, if I was playing, like, two or three copies of Gofu, I would want, like, multiple copies of the extra deck stuff, and it just it just ruined my extra deck because I had to play the uh, Proxy uh, Dragon, the Deco Talker, and it was just, like... It was just too much, uh, like, room in the extra deck. I just, I just didn't want to drop Utopia, uh, like, the combo. It's, like, it's too good. I could probably drop these, to be honest, but I don't know. I just like, like having options in the deck. Uh, but anyways, next up, uh, three Wolf, three Felice. I wish one of them was, like, a uh, non-Beast Warrior. Because sometimes, like, you, you get really lucky off the mills, and you're like, wait, uh, I got a Warrior, and then I got a Beast Warrior, and then I'm like, ah, uh, too bad it wasn't, like, something else, like a Fairy or something like that. It would really help out. But uh, anyways, next up we got one copy of Pod Desires, then triple copy of Solars, triple copy of Charge, that was a change on the new ban list, double copies of Reincarnation, because sometimes early game you accidentally send Grand or Golem, and you want to go for that turn one play of just making this, because it is a very strong play. I know we got OTK'd, but uh, if, I, if I had actually uh, been smart and actually summoned the Fairy Tail Snow or used it as material for a, a exceed, that would have been a really good play, and then from there... Uh, I would have actually been able to survive, and obviously uh, next turn I probably would have actually gamed my opponent. It's a very fast deck in, in general. Um, and then we got uh, triple copies of Lurge, just because, uh, well, I, I like alluring this card and this card. But uh, it's also because sometimes random golems could not be optimal, whether your opponent like makes a board and you just need your normal summon or something like that. You can just alert Darkness it, and also you can alert the summoner monk. But uh, as far as extra deck goes, um, the only really important cards, honestly, like. I've been finding myself not to make this card as often as I used to, uh, just because the game has gotten like a lot faster. But like pretty much like the important cards are I would say Utopia, Castell, number forty-one, Minerva, and of course Curios, and of course these cards because you need these cards to make the combo. I, I would I would add more of these again. That was kind of one problem I ran into. Like I need a bigger extra deck. Uh, I think we need like twenty cards. Uh, I don't know. Some people prefer the extra deck just being fifteen, and we we can make another video another time to talk about the extra deck it, for it being increased. But um, yeah, like I said, with Grinder Golem combo, uh, you only got really one option to make it. Um, I mean, you could put another four extra cards to make another uh, Kyros, but I feel like it's just so good turn one. It kind of goes to the same thing that I was talking about with Gofu. Like, you run out of cards, but I also wanted to mention sometimes, like, it doesn't matter because if you go for that one one play, usually that it secures you so much advantage. In a deck like this where it's so fast, you either win or lose, like, within the first three turns, uh, you know, it doesn't really matter that you, you know, uh, can only make one. So consider that as well when you're building the deck. But this card is just good overall. I was actually considering playing Level Eater as well as a Treeborn Frog. They're just like a lot of really good cards that just that can be uh, used in a Link Monster format. But anyways, that's it for the explanation of how to go for uh, the Curious Turn 1, also the deck profile for those of you guys that did want it. I think we can make some improvements. Let me know, guys, what you would think uh, could be improved upon down below in the comment section below. But there, guys, is how you make a one-card Curious Dominion of Light Sworn. <laughs> it's a really good card. But anyways, hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, drop a like on it. And if you're new to the channel, hit that subscribe button to see more Yu-Gi-Oh! content.